Hello everyone! In this week's video, I will be drawing a new YouTube profile picture and answering your questions. For the past couple of months, I've been wanting to redraw my profile picture that I use for my social media and YouTube. It's a little over a year old now and I'm kind of just starting to not really like it or I feel like it doesn't represent my current art style. Uh, so yeah, I want to change it. I also post on social media and my community tab asking all of you for questions and I'll be answering them in this video. But before we jump into the video, I want to show you Wondershare Filmora. Filmora is an easy to use video editing software with powerful functions and it's for all skill levels. Anyone can quickly and easily start using Filmora even with zero editing skills. I think Wondershare Filmora is a great program and it has so many features like motion tracking, screen recording, preset templates, green screen, color correction, and so much more. My two current favorite features are split screen and silence detection. Split screen makes it super easy to split your content across the screen. Just drag and drop the template onto your timeline, then drag in your media. If you click advanced, there are even more options for you to customize, like different animations. This makes showing my art on screen in an interesting way really easy. Silence detection is super neat. It detects silent areas in your audio and gets rid of all of them. I like how you can adjust the settings of it to your liking and it's super fast. I often have long and short pauses in my audio that need to be edited out and it can be a bit of a hassle. But with silence detection, I can get rid of those pauses super easy. Another thing that's great about Filmora is that it's free to try. Explore Filmora's features and test it out for yourself. You can download Filmora using my link in the description box and pinned comment. Okay, now let's get into the video. I quickly want to thank you all so much for 700,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for your support and the kindness you have shown me. This channel wouldn't be where it is if it weren't for all of you. I am so grateful that you all enjoy my videos and like my art. I have so much fun being able to share my work with all of you and being able to share what I enjoy with you. So thank you so much for being here. It truly means so much to me. So thank you so much again for 700,000 subscribers. Um, so for my profile picture, I'm starting out by sketching different ideas. I wanted to change my icon, but not too much because I didn't want it to be confusing to people or I wanted it to still be recognizable that it's my channel and stuff. Uh, but I did want it to be a little bit more interesting. I got the idea of having me hold my tablet pen and I thought that I'd maybe add a bit more interest. I had taken a picture to use as a reference. I was trying to capture my hand but I kind of liked the entire pose overall. So I was trying to recreate it in my style. Um, okay, so now I'll start answering some questions and I'll talk more about the art in between the questions. This question is from Abel. When did you start your art career? I would say I've truly had an art career for the last four years. That's when I started making enough that I could support myself by just doing art and YouTube. Yesterday was actually my channel's nine year anniversary, which is kind of crazy to say. I can still very vividly remember posting my first video. It feels like it wasn't that long ago, but at the same time, it feels like it was a long time ago. <laughs> Dane and Anna Anime Productions asks, what is it like to record a voiceover when there are eight siblings in the background? Uh, so if you don't know, I have eight siblings and yeah, recording voiceover is not easy. <laughs> I often have to stop talking when I'm recording voiceover because someone is running past my room, shutting a door kind of hard, talking loud, fighting. Plus our family room is in the attic and the bedrooms are on the middle floor. So when they walk and run around in the attic, you can hear it. That's why you will occasionally hear thuds or stomping sounds in my audio. Purple J is wondering, what type of manga do you prefer to read and or draw? And how did you develop your style? When it comes to manga that I like to read, I often prefer shoujo. But I am finding recently I do enjoy drama stories. I've been reading a lot of drama type stories on Webtoon, but I do still read a good amount of romance stories. I also like sports manga, but I haven't read much since Haikyuu ended. When it comes to developing my style, I feel like it's something that has kind of just naturally happened over time. I'll see little things that I like and I'll include them in my art. The things I like and dislike change over time and my preferences kind of come through in my art. But I think I'll always be a fan of big shiny eyes and fluffy hair. <laughs> I think developing a style is a lot about finding what you like. And it can also change as you learn things like anatomy, shading, and stuff like that. I think it's kind of something that happens naturally over time. Nocturnal Loner asks, Do you plan to do another comic after my next door neighbors? 
If you do, can you tell us anything about this comic? I do hope I want to make a comic after My Next Door Neighbors, and if I do, I want it to be very different. I would describe My Next Door Neighbors as a drama with a bit of slice of life and romance, so I want to do something very different from that. Maybe something with a bit more mystery and world development, or maybe a fantasy story. Recently, I find I am most inspired by my fairy-like characters, Pry and Carson, as well as Chip and Silva. Uh, but I do also really like Sullivan and Candace, who I created recently. <laughs> Lotto is wondering, have you ever worked for a professional project such as animated series or video games? And if not, which enterprise would you like to work? I have not worked on anything professionally, but if I did, I'd want it to be a video game. Video game development has always fascinated me, and I think it'd be so cool to have my art in a game. Sunny Alolan is asking, I've always been curious about your thoughts when it comes to Pokemon. Do you have a favorite character or Pokemon? I really like Pokemon. My siblings and I watch the anime, and I do really enjoy the games. I was going through a time where I was a bit bored with Pokemon, but Legends Arceus really changed that. I had so much fun with that game. It was the most fun I had with a Pokemon game since the first Pokemon game I played. Now I'm really looking forward to the next game. I think I'm going to get Violet, but I'm not totally sure. I don't know if I have a favorite character, but for my favorite Pokemon, Torchic will always have a special place in my heart for being my first Pokemon. I also really love Rowlet and Sobble and Pikachu and Eevee. Oh, and Riolu. I think Riolu is so cute. Uh, so I was drawing my head a bit turned and I did like the concept of it. It had a bit more movement and is maybe a bit more interesting. However, I could tell that there were little things that I didn't like, but I didn't totally know what I didn't like. I could just tell there were little things that were kind of off. I kept tweaking it a bit, but it just kept feeling weird. And I knew that in a couple weeks, I would probably actually see the things that are off and I wouldn't like the picture anymore. And because this is a profile picture, I need to like it for a good amount of time. I don't want to have to change it again really soon. Uh, so I decided to play it safe and draw a new head using the symmetrical ruler. If this was just an illustration that I kind of look at for a little bit and kind of just post on social media, I probably would have gone with the first head because I thought it was okay. And if I didn't like it later, it's not too big of a deal. But yeah, like I said, because it's a profile picture, I need to like it for a while. And a lot of times if I draw heads in front view, I like them for longer just because there's less that can go wonky. Plus it is more similar to my current profile picture. So maybe it'll still be more recognizable. Kamiya Joji R asks, my question is how much longer will my next door neighbors be? Um, we probably have like 10 chapters left, maybe more, maybe less. So we are getting closer to the end, which is kind of crazy. But considering it takes me about a month to make a chapter, we still have like 10 months left to go. <laughs> Gels11 is wondering, what do you like to do in your free time? Recently, I feel like I don't do very much in my free time. <laughs> a lot of times I'll play some video games. Recently, my brother Joel and I have been playing two player Cadence of Hyrule. And that's been a lot of fun. We beat the main game and now we're doing the bonus stuff. Uh, also, since it's been summer, we've been going outside a good amount, so that's fun. Gcooker113 asks, How do you plan the storyboard and layout of your comic? Also, do you have any pet peeves that you just can't stand? Um, for storyboarding, a lot of times I just quickly sketch out what the scenes from my head kind of look like. I do try to keep in mind how many close-up and far-away shots there are. I try to have a balance of both. I also try to ask myself, do we need to see the character's face? And if it's not really needed, what's something else I could focus on to add interest and variety? That way we don't just have a bunch of talking heads and panels. <laughs> For scenes that have a lot of background objects like couches, tables, lamps, and all that stuff, I'll use 3D models to help me lay things out and also keep things consistent from panel to panel. As for pet peeves that I can't stand, um, something that does bother me is when my siblings walk back and forth behind my chair. Our floors are kind of old and when people walk by, it makes the floor move a little. And I get dizzy very easily, so if people keep walking behind me and keep making me move a bit, I'm like, please stop, you're making me nauseous. <laughs> so for the line art, I decided to make it be a bit on the thicker side. I did this because my icon will be tiny and I still want the line art to be visible. The line art on my current profile picture is pretty thin and because of that it kind of fades away when it's really small. 
So yeah, this time I'm making it thicker to help it stand out more. Artist Niche is wondering, how do you deal with negative comments or constructive criticism? Honestly, I feel like I used to be better at handling negative comments. I'm not sure why, but I feel like they affect me more now than they did in the past. Maybe it's because I get them more often now. <laughs> uh, for the most part, I just try to brush them off, especially if they are just being rude with no real feedback. When it comes to actually constructive criticism, I can usually handle it pretty well and I try to see where the person is coming from and try to take in the feedback. Uh, but if the person is just being kind of really mean, I try to just brush it off, but it can have a tendency to like live in the back of my brain. The YouTuber Minori kind of talked about this in one of her recent videos and she said something like she lost trust in herself because of negative feedback. And I really related to that. It's like I have a hard time trusting myself. Like, is this thing I just drew good? I don't really know anymore. Uh, so yeah, that's something I'm working on. Sorry to get all deep and sappy. This is supposed to be happy. <laughs> I just rhymed. Raspberry Love 7 asks, I started watching Haikyuu because you said it's your favorite anime. I'm only on season one and I'm wondering who your favorite characters are. That's a really hard one. I honestly don't know if I have one favorite character. It's kind of like each time I watch or read Haikyuu, I gain another favorite. <laughs> Sugawara was my first favorite, so maybe him, but I love so many of the characters. MJ the Artist Mermaid asks, what artists inspire you the most and when did you start art? I always kind of liked drawing, but I got into the manga style when I was like 14. The artist that inspired me the most in my early art days was the artist of the manga Kitchen Princess, Natsumi Ando. I loved her art so much and I would often study it. When I was about 15, I found Nana Haruta's work and she also really inspired me. Also, Sophie Chan and Mark Curley were a huge help to me when I was starting out. I watched their videos a ton. Rail a rail, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, is wondering, do you ever feel irrationally frustrated when something in your drawing isn't going the way you intended it to? Do you have any tips on how to overcome that sort of frustration related art block? Yes, I do get frustrated sometimes when things aren't working out, especially if I'm trying to meet a deadline because it's like I'm wasting time, I need to get this done. <laughs> a lot of times if things aren't working, I just try to draw it in a different way if I can, or I'll try something different. Uh, but if I'm not able to do that for some reason, I take a break, eat some food, and try to come back with a level head. But it can be tricky. Also, sometimes if I'm having a hard time with things, I'll try to find more reference pictures of that thing that kind of help me out. For the coloring and shading, I want to make it really pop and be very vibrant. I noticed the shading in my current icon is a bit dull. And since this is a profile icon, I want to make it more colorful this time and have more fun colors. So for the shading, I'm using very bright and saturated colors set to multiply. Also, you may have noticed I decided to change my mouth to be open. The closed mouth was okay, but I feel like the open mouth is a bit more expressive. And it's also easier to see when the picture is small. Kreetsy Christy asks, Since My Next Door Neighbors is a series, I'm curious, did you have anything planned out before you started writing, like the ending and the beginning, etc? Or did you have an idea and just wrote it out while you started the comics? AKA, winging it. <laughs> I was definitely winging it. I literally decided at the last minute, as I was illustrating chapter two that I would make Brayson and Chase be ex-stepbrothers. You see, I had heard this thing that manga artists in Japan would plan out a few chapters at a time. And as they work on those chapters, they planned out what they would write for the next ones. And so that's kind of what I did for a long time with my webcomic. But I would say since about season two or a little before it, I started planning things out way more. I have tons of chapters written and planned out. However, I don't always stick to the plan. Like recently, I rewrote a whole chapter because I didn't like it anymore. <laughs> I still have to write out the ending for my next door neighbors, but I have a decent idea of how it ends up in my head. Kai asks, when did you start getting interested in art and was there a reason why? I'm not totally sure why I got into art to be honest. <laughs> I think I was just kind of bored and was looking for something to do. Plus a lot of my family members were really supportive and I liked showing my art to them. Reporter G08 is wondering, when did you start writing slash coming up of stories? I think I was about 12 when I started getting interested in creating my own stories. I liked coming up with worlds and the characters and would often daydream about them. 
However, my skills were very lacking, so most of my ideas just stayed up in my head. Which is kind of sad because I don't really remember my old stories. I would say the trickiest part for coloring was my hair. I don't know why, but I never really like shading brown hair. Maybe it's because I don't do it super often. A lot of times I only need to shade brown hair when drawing myself. So I don't really know what colors I want to use exactly. I have to play around with it a bit. But like with the rest of the shading, I tried to use a variety of bright colors. Brianna H has two questions. How do you find inspiration when you don't want to draw or have art block? How did you start learning anatomy and how do you study it now? When it comes to how I find inspiration to draw when I don't really want to or I have art block, I'm not totally sure to be honest. A lot of times I need to draw for work so even if I have art block or I don't want to draw, I just kind of have to. I have to power through it I guess. <laughs> and the kind of urgency in a way forces me to get motivated. Uh, but if I am having a week that I feel like I just can't draw, I'll do different kinds of videos that don't require as much drawing or like no drawing, uh, just to give myself a bit of a break. When it comes to art that's not YouTube related, like stuff in my sketchbook, there are times that I kind of want to draw, but it's like my brain can't think or decide on something to draw. So I find what's been helping me a ton is drawing boxes. In this case, I paint boxes because I'm using a watercolor sketchbook. But like a blank page can feel intimidating because it has so many possibilities. So to help me get started, I paint some shapes, then fill the shapes with whatever comes to mind. I try to keep it really chill and low pressure. I also try to stick with a color scheme and this helps inspire me because I'll draw things that that color scheme makes me think of. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of how I tackle that. Uh, when it comes to drawing anatomy, I started out by watching tutorials on YouTube. There weren't a ton at the time, but there were a few. I would also try to learn from how to draw manga books. In more recent years, I mostly look at reference pictures and break them down or try to draw them in my style. And very recently, I tried a new practicing method in this video and I found it was very effective. I won't explain it all here, but you can check it out in that video if you want. Heyman's question is, what is your favorite drawing you've made so far this year? I'm going to say it's this drawing of Doris. I really like how it turned out, plus it's a picture of one of my babies. I'm really happy with how the colors and her expression turned out. Cookie Cat asks, What is the most cursed thing you drew? Ah, uh, the most cursed thing I probably drew was one I made when I was like 15. I tried to draw my sister Ruth, who was a toddler at the time. It turned out so bad, like really bad. I actually threw it away and it is very rare that I throw my art away. Uh, so yeah, I really didn't like it. But now I wish I had it so I could show you. <laughs> when drawing myself, I never know if I should style myself younger, kind of like how I draw my usual girl characters. Or if I should draw myself looking more my age in my style. I was thinking about drawing myself how I usually draw girls. But I kind of just ended up drawing myself more mature looking. Uh, but I think it's okay. It is a little funny if you compare my profile pictures from over the years. My character slowly gets older looking. <laughs> I wonder what it'll look like when I'm like 50 years old. Maybe by then I wouldn't draw myself. <laughs> also a lot of times I use this pattern for my channel related art. And my current icon has it, but I think I'll make this picture have a solid color for the background because the pattern doesn't stand out very much when it's really tiny. Uh, so yeah, but I do like the pattern. Sprinkle Girl asks, Have you ever started making a video and never finished it? And do you have any action stories? So actually very recently I was working on a video, but I didn't finish it. Like I mentioned, game development has always interested me. So I thought I would try to make my own simple platforming game. I made the character in her different animations, but when it came time to make the game portion, I was getting very confused. I was using the program GDevelop. It's a program that doesn't require you to type code as a drag and drop interface, but it's still pretty confusing. Uh, so yeah, I had to scrap that video mostly because of lack of time but maybe it's something I can try to do again someday. My first ever comic, I Want to Be a Magical Girl, has a little bit of action, but not a huge amount. Uh, if you want to read it, I still sell it on Amazon. App Haynes' questions are, what's your favorite kind of dessert? Who's your favorite Legend of Zelda character besides Link? My favorite kind of dessert is probably cookies. Recently, I really like cookies. Oh, this is a hard one. 
I'm going to say maybe Tetra slash Zelda from Wind Waker. I really love Zelda in that one. It's a very different take on her. I also really like Sidon from Breath of the Wild. Oh, and Beetle. For some reason, Beetle makes me happy. I really like seeing him in all the different games. Miriam Maharek is wondering, are you going to draw your old manga, I Want to Be a Magical Girl again? Please do, I'm sure it's going to be amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Honestly, I probably wouldn't. I don't know. It does sound neat and the idea of making it again would be kind of cool, but I think I'd rather spend time creating new stuff instead of remaking old stuff. At least that's how I feel right now. Matt Skyapple is wondering, have you ever thought about different careers in case art didn't work out for you? Yep, I did. My backup plan was accounting and I went to college for accounting and got my degree in it. Let's just say I'm glad the art thing worked out. <laughs> Water Clover is wondering, what do you think of editing videos? Do you like it or is it annoying? For the most part, I like it. I like the variety it adds to my workflow and I like seeing things come together, but it can be annoying, especially when Premiere Pro won't cooperate with me. <laughs> so this last question is from MJ Draws and Paints. As a beginner YouTuber, did you ever expect or imagine your channel to grow as much as it has? If so, why? If not, why? If you were to tell me back when I posted my first video that I'd have over 700,000 subscribers, I wouldn't believe you. <laughs> I never really thought my channel would grow so much because I guess I didn't think people would be very interested. It's hard to comprehend and amazing that there are so many people that are interested in what I create. I'm so happy that I get to share my work with all of you and that many of you get motivated or inspired by it. It truly makes me really happy and brings a smile to my face whenever people say that my videos inspire them, make them happy, or have helped them in some way. I think it's really neat that I can be a part of someone's art journey. So here's my new profile picture. When I decided that I would draw a new icon, I didn't think there would be too much of a difference between the old one and the new one, but it's interesting to see how much my art has changed in just a year. I didn't think there would be this much of a difference. But I am pretty happy with how the new one turned out and I think it better represents my current style. So that is all for this video, but before we end I want to say a big thank you to my YouTube members and patrons for their support. It means so very much to me and thank you so much again for 700,000 subscribers and for watching this video. I hope you continue to enjoy my content and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!